Okay, so uh, thank you very much to join the uh, panel. And uh, as an introduction, uh, as a first part, so our conversation will have a few uh, elements. Uh, of, of, so we're gonna have like round table introduction. Uh, we're gonna uh, talk about the retrospective of ICM and uh, give some uh, perspectives or your opinion on the perspectives. Uh, but to give a few uh, small background. Uh, so in December 2019, we're uh, actually going to have the 10th anniversary of a famous uh, 2009 uh, Connex paper, where Van Jacobson effectively introduced the name data network. I mean, it had the initial different name, but essentially this is the concept that we have been working for uh, 10 years now. And uh, in the last uh, 10 years, we actually have seen a lot of uh, research development efforts, uh, some industry involvement in the development of ICM architecture. Uh, there are several ICM architectures that we have seen and the like, protocols, prototype applications, the deployment of the NDN testbed and some many other testbed. Uh, so what we wanted to, to have uh, in this panel is to actually discuss what we did, what we did good, uh, what kind of uh, challenges that we have experienced and uh, using those challenges to try to kind of give some perspective for, for the future. So we're going to see ICM in uh, five to 10 years. And with that, uh, I will uh, give the panel opportunity to introduce uh, themselves, or panelists opportunity to introduce themselves. And I would like you to also at least include what the kind of ICM research you're doing, uh, what motivates your uh, ICM research and what is the current uh, research in ICM. Okay. Uh, my name is Kai Lei. I'm from the Peking University in Shenzhen campus. Uh, actually, I, I, I started to look at the ICM at the very early. Like uh, I joined the CCMCon uh, in 2001, uh, 2011, sorry, 2011. So I have been working on ICM, especially NDN, like uh, forwarding strategies and uh, congestion control and some fundamental system applications. Currently, I'm interested in using ICN in IoT, especially for the uh, age, age IoT. And uh, uh, some interesting work that I have, I have done, like uh, I believe started from 2017, is I started combine the uh, ICN with uh, blockchain. Uh, like like uh, just uh, I, I, I listened to Lisha's uh, uh, talk. Uh, he she raised the issue about the uh, building trust of the repo. I think that could be a possible uh, thinking or solution to look at because uh, uh, blockchain and NDN both are distributed architecture and they have something in common. Uh, that, that's that's what I that's what I believe. Thank you. Uh, my name is Dan Pei from Tsinghua University. Um, I, I graduated from a VCS uh, group in 2005 as a PhD student. And um, I, I actually was at the Connex 2009 conference, sitting in the first row and listening to Van Jackson's talk. It's something like this. You know, one was standing there and I was sitting right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I happened to have a, a paper there. so. Listen to this talk. It's, it's great. Yeah, um, I started uh, on working on ICN in about 2011, and uh, and uh, my uh, entire research focus uh, has been since my PhD years uh, has been uh, you know mining the networking data, distributed system data to um, get some more intelligent so that the system can run more intelligent. Right, um, and uh, and uh, you know, you know when I when I was working at the uh, UCLA and later on at AT and T research, I um, get a sense that you know with the uh, existing networking architecture, you know you can build some intelligence, but there's a clear ceiling that what you can do. That's why I got interested in new architecture. So I thought, okay, maybe you know with the new architecture we can more intelligence into it so that we can uh, solve networking problem better. So I've been working on some uh, uh, caching related stuff, um, more, more intelligent caching and uh, uh, 
to the car fetching, etc. Live broadcasting with uh, with the SEM, right? Um, and uh, but you know, uh, as Lisa mentioned, we need um, we need more experimental E three uh, to guide our design. And uh, so right now, I spend uh, quite a significant a significant amount of efforts on uh, building intelligence. Uh, into the operations of the distributed system so that we can lay down the lesson and technique that we build can potentially help ICM in the future. You, uh, I'm Yu Zhang from Harbin Institute of Technology. And uh, I started ICM research uh, because I'm a visiting scholar at the research group uh, in 2014. Uh, so uh, from that time, uh, I started uh, at the beginning. Uh, that today, uh, my talk, uh, my interest is on routing uh, credibility. But later, uh, Lisa told me to learn no much to do about the routing of the data. So I switched direction to the mobility. Uh, and uh, in those years, we were working on Produce mobility support for a year. And another research interest uh, is on is, uh, internet infrastructure uh, decentralization. So, uh, in this research, uh, basically, we want to decentralize uh, DNS and infrastructure, uh, especially on uh, the root good. Uh, so, I think this. Uh, how the NDN thinking have helped me to solve uh, some problem with uh, with the DNS decentralization of uh, and, uh, I think uh, in next step uh, I will put my effort on like uh, this uh, uh, IoT uh, uh, special field environment uh, which uh, the NDN thinking. That can be applied to this IoT environment. I'm Peter Nambala from Australian University, and um, I started uh, looking at the ICN, say, from like 2011 or so. Um, in our school, we started uh, studying on ICN around that time. And they involve several professors and students. And then, um, yeah, of course, uh, and then one of uh, the topic. And uh, I, since then, I worked on uh, many aspects, you know, each individual student assigned some of the <laughs> topic. And uh, the, the highlight in, in, the, in the work field is that I was involved in uh, uh, Europe, Japan, EU, Japan projects. Uh, one is called Green ICN, which is an application of ICN to like, for green, like uh, saving energy or uh, how to make a efficient distribution of uh, video, that kind of uh, goal we had. And after that, right now I'm involved in Another uh, EU Japan project called uh, Fed for IoT. So uh, the target of the project is federating uh, many silos of uh, IoT networks, making use of uh, some technology, including NDN. And uh, <clears throat> right now, uh, yeah, we are trying to uh, put uh, NDN into layers, say, uh, to integrate different uh, IoT silos, uh, combining using you know, the name uh, as, a, as a key. And also, possibly, we can make uh, in the end to put the, the, the higher layer, which is a uh, network uh, to communicate the meta information or, or means uh, the sharing the IoT data among different 
application, we need uh, uh, yeah, we call context information. There, of course, uh, we can use the name to identify appropriate uh, IoT devices in different networks. So that is the uh, current work for me. And uh, I always say that uh, <coughs> internet is broken in the sense that uh, the communication over internet, uh, we cannot know who you are really talking with, and that is not the real communication. So eventually, that aspect of our uh, internet needs to be fixed because the countries are spending tons of money on cybersecurity, and eventually that will uh, get too too expensive, and we need to replace the protocol there. That might be. So, as one of the candidates to replace the IP, I'm uh, betting on, I think. Okay, this is the teacher talk from UCLA. Uh, I'm thinking about when I started uh, and then it's a very difficult question because uh, I've been uh, working with uh, Van Jacobson, the inventor of NDN, uh, for many years, so long before the, the name NDN uh, got coined. I actually got to know Van in my early days of graduate school back in the 80s. And then uh, after graduation, I think we collaborated on a number of things. The very I, I think that the, earlier we worked on reliable, scalable, reliable multicast. Uh, one could see that uh, a number of ideas from that SRM work actually end up in the NDA design. The next thing I worked with them in the with him uh, in the late 90s is actually is called the, the adaptive web caching. I would consider this adaptive web caching as a forerunner of uh, the current game design in the sense that in the early days of the web, uh, everyone noticed the congestion problem. In the, the idea of adaptive web caching actually is to build a content distribution network. Uh, but at the time, the thought was the building an overlay uh, until you know, after a number of years that a friend eventually coined the idea actually put this uh, um, uh, name-based uh, networking as the network base. So I agree with you completely. Today's internet faces fundamental challenges. I think that uh, despite all the effort and the resources uh, that put into the research, it's unclear we are actually getting better. And therefore, I think that's inevitable that the new architecture uh, must emerge. The only question is when and not why, and not, not the why. Okay, okay so uh, thank you for the panels for the introduction. <coughs> and uh, I would like to switch to the kind of uh, ICN uh, retrospect. So what do you think is the main research success of uh, ICN in general, or specific architecture in particular, like in the end? Uh, and in particular, can you highlight the applications of ICN and NDN uh, as a whole, or specific protocols, uh, specific NDN, ICN inspired uh, protocols that actually took off? And answer this first. Sure. Because the first answer to this question would be easier. <laughs> I would leave the time for, the, for, for their for, for, for the to think. I think ICN, I, um, the, the, the most impressive, impressive, uh, impressive thing to me for uh, I think and NDN is uh, uh, at, at the very beginning when I start uh, started to look into the uh, internet architecture. Uh, I, I still remember I noticed that there's a net NIF, net IA, right? Uh, the uh, NDN uh, for the past ten years, uh, I think the most uh, but the biggest contribution is the code. Uh, I see the Indian part of the open source code constantly be maintained and developed. And the, and the, the other one is the, all those tools. So it gave us some uh, fundamental uh, uh, experiment, how to do the testing and experiment. 
So that's the most, uh, I think, it's the success part of the Pandium, and uh, at least I see it. So, uh, because internet architecture is uh, very big and broad, how to verify an algorithm, how to test uh, the performance, especially for next generation architecture, it's a very real problem for you know for us to do the research. So that's it. Uh, just one more clarification for to, to guide the future answer. But uh, in this question of the success of ICN, um, I actually wanted to extract uh, something tangible, but not oh, the code okay. base of the research of the architecture itself, oh. but rather what is, is there a sex impact success oh. of uh, ICN? Okay. So yesterday, uh, I always ask about this question, and I think that's called the uh, NDN thinking, how NDN thinking is the most uh, successful impact on our time. And, uh, maybe we don't uh, use, uh, develop some team with the NDN or NDN, but it's a research effort, and uh, our self effort have cast uh, the thinking into our mind. And we will uh, face any problem in the future, and uh, we will think in this uh, the deep central thinking way, so I think it's a better way than the uh, host century or, or channel century way. And many problems uh, in current internet, uh, security or mobility, is, uh, most of them is uh, due to the current solution is, uh, <coughs> is uh, proposed in this node central way. So when we Look at the problem from another aspect. We will find the problem maybe not difficult to be solved. <coughs> so I think that uh, maybe that's, uh, that's the meaning of this research. The most uh, important meaning of research is to change people's uh, thinking. I think that uh, I see how I have uh, to achieve the, this goal very well. Yeah, um, this effort I think, yeah, lasted for 10 years and um, the concept of uh, content centric or information centric, I should say, um, becomes kind of widespread, popular, um, that is important. And when I look at uh, the detail of the NDN, so this combination of content-centric, having signature and caching, they are they look like uh, the separate concept, but they are very well interrelated. They cannot exist by itself. Um, so this combination um, is is a kind of. Uh, uh, we, we should we should sell. Uh, it's a it's kind of success in a sense. Uh, how how we can come up with this combination is a kind of surprise. Uh, they cannot exist by itself. Uh, I agree with you that uh, uh, turn our thinking into uh, the from the node centric to uh, data centric. I think that's a fundamental uh, change. That's a great achievement uh, for my. So, personally, um, back in 2010, when the, the U.S. National Science Foundation founded the, the NDN project, at that time, I, I must say that the understanding of uh, NDN itself, and also how to roll out a new architecture, uh, the understanding at that time, now looking back, was rather maybe, I would say, I think that this uh, nine years of uh, research uh, mostly taught us lots of lessons. Uh, but uh, that also followed uh, Richard Feynman's um, statement that the, the only way to, to judge the truth is the experimentation. It's really through the doing you learn about uh, how to uh, develop a new architecture and how difficult it is. Uh, 
At that time, at least for myself, I didn't realize how challenged it was. Maybe if I knew, maybe I would take it the second time, but uh, maybe not. Um, and another thing I want to say is that uh, the idea of Indian didn't really just drop from the sky one day. It's really the accumulation of lessons we learned from the operational internet over the years uh, that eventually crystallized into this, uh, I think I want to say, conceptually very simple architecture model. So you, you don't count the code base um, as the achievement. I still think that at least one part of the big achievement provide a enabler for others to, to really run the experimentation. Without that, uh, then uh, it would be conceptually, it would be very difficult to actually conduct any experimentation. Um, I share some of Kai's uh, opinion. So to me, uh, because of, you know, uh, he just code of Richard Carl Freeman as well. Uh, to me, I think the, the infrastructure for ICN uh, that enable real application for, for ICN is the most success, right? So uh, the, you know, in, uh, in the end, the vehicle, the routing, uh, forwarding, design, etc., and, and also the test bed. With all of this, we can now really experiment on it. And that's kind of the enable the foundation of uh, this uh, the future, future development. If you look back into the history of the internet itself, took many years to build this foundation, build this infrastructure, right? And then some real, some application that you know, no other uh, technique can enable, right? And then, you know, wait for some opportunity and suddenly we become, you know, the standard. Right? So I think the, the infrastructure for ICN is the uh, real success in the past. If I ask one uh, follow-up question, uh, do you know any anecdotes or the actual deployment of uh, protocols that we have today that have similarity to what ICN is doing? So I think most of the people will compare like ICN to, to, to closer to at least my opinion is uh, SDN. Like SDN, they they are also trying to like uh, before they just. Uh, Try to focus on the control panel, right? So uh, I was uh, in London yesterday, and they are starting to build a, a, a data panel operating system. And, and the upper level is SDN controller, and the lower level for the white box. They use white box, and, uh, and the, they they implement a very flexible uh, data data panel as well. So they are trying to do this. And uh, for the previous question, uh, uh, yeah, I think I, I got some idea is uh, uh, NDN, ICN gives me most, uh, when, when we look at the, the internet architecture is, uh, uh, I learned a lot from, uh, the most important thing is problem driven, problem driven. And the, the, this is the first. And the second is uh, how to solve all these problems together. That's ability. So uh, before we solve the problem, we look at the security. Now we solve solve the security problem. We look at the uh, routing. Now we solve the routing problem. Uh, when we meet some like scalability problem, now we solve solve it. But the NDN gave me uh, like ICN gives me a whole picture. Try to solve this uh, internet problem uh, from the you know uh, 360 degree. And uh, this is an uh, answer that uh, probably I, I believe the most, uh, or the only one answer which can uh, take all these problems together and uh, try to solve it. I think that's really a, a infrastructure. The other way we just uh, find a solution to the problem. And so, so one reason I brought this question, uh, so there was a this Google recent proposal to start the authenticating the HTTP object. So this is like not necessarily ICN inspired. Mm, this is kind of the same parallel, similar thinking of uh, what we have in ICN and DN, and it's kind of being in parallel injected in, in our real world. Uh, 
uh, but I don't know whether you have any other examples of, uh, of this. Uh, moving with, uh, along the lines of uh, kind of retrospective, uh, we talked about the success uh, of, of ICN, uh, of ICN related things. Um, and what, what is your, uh, in your opinion, um, can you highlight uh, the most critical roadblocks or problems that hindered research, development, deployment uh, in, in ICN in general or specifically in your area of interest? That's right. I, I actually think that the biggest challenge that I have seen over the years is not it's not the funding, uh, it's not how difficult the problem is. The most <coughs> challenging problem I have encountered is how to change people's thinking. Uh, after like a, a number of explanation of how India works, I often end up hearing the questions. Uh, where is the address? Where do you hide it? Uh, people believe that uh, somehow if you do networking, you have an address hidden somewhere. Because uh, otherwise, a packet cannot get delivered. I think it is uh, something that the earlier presentation mentioned is node centric thinking uh, versus data centric thinking. It's very difficult to change. So, so just like uh, in the early days, when I was in graduate school, uh, there is a phrase called a bell shift describing people from the telecom industry where they believe circuit is a fundamental unit for communications. Uh, and somehow this is best step the data ground didn't think like a proper uh, foundation to build a uh, global communication network. Now, the fact that has explained, I mean, has shown that uh, you can build uh, the global communication systems uh, using telegrams, but that has convinced people so deeply. And, uh, and so therefore they think that that's the only way you can build the communication networks that be the deliver packets to a destination address. I found that the, the mental block is the biggest challenge. All the other technical questions, you can find the solutions. If people uh, recognize there are problems to solve, and they can solve it. Uh, but the changing one's religion seems to be most challenging. Yeah. So I, I have a quick hint from Nisha's words. Is uh, currently for the NBN, at least for people in China, I, I wish that all the documents can be. Uh, multilingual machine so people can easily follow the idea. Because uh, uh, I remember when I first looked at the NDN ICN, that's back to 2010, uh, I spent like a, a few years working on the P2, uh, P2P. I, I think first uh, maybe at least a half a year I didn't differentiate what's the difference between the ICN and the NDN. It gave me a, a very long, at least a very long time to uh, get the basic idea of uh, ICM. It's really a hard time for, especially for the uh, students and the newcomers. <coughs> so if that's possible, I, I, I maybe it's the same case for I don't know for people in Japan and uh, for people in Korea to reading, but at least for Chinese people, they they they, all, they like to read this uh, Chinese documents easier for them. Yeah, of course I cannot read Chinese. So. Uh, yeah, but um, I, 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 I spoke with my students and uh, they, they consider IP, IP or the internet is, is there. They don't, they don't, they have no suspect on, on IP. So they, it's, it's there. That's supposed to be used. You know, they don't want to change there. So it's a mindset <laughs> in students. Although they are young, they don't really speak speed. So for me, the, the biggest roadblock is widespread of IP. <laughs> so unless we can show that the big advantage of uh, Yeah.
have, but on the other hand, uh, we have these small networks, large or deep. So that's that's what I'm looking at. If I can provide sure. that ret retrospective uh, answer to your earlier question, to say which uh, fertile application <coughs> has similar thinking as the near, that's the peer-to-peer filter. -peer, uh, the early had the concept that the security goes with the data instead of uh, the containers or the channels. So BitTorrent actually has this uh, um, hash on every data chunk as a way to do the verification rather than using the TLS to uh, so-called trust the bodies. Uh, they can fetch from anyone as long as the data can be verified. I, I think that's really one, one of the many things I would say uh, that, that uh, looks close as a, as a new way of uh, thinking. The other day, I was looking at the, the IETF uh, ongoing activities. Uh, it could be just my view that I was thinking about the NDA. I would consider majority of the ongoing activities actually assembles uh, or calls for the need of like NDA functions, one way or the other. I, I do believe that there is a convergence in terms of the solution development, moving towards this uh, data-centric uh, direction. Just people haven't recognized that's what the NDA has been pushing uh, all these uh, years. Uh, to me, uh, as mentioned earlier, I think for any uh, architectural design, we need feedback from the real application, right? So that we know what the problem are. Maybe the real challenge of you know ICN may not have been presented itself yet, right? So uh, we need the uh, email and FTP application of NDN. Uh, you know, we, in, for example, if I remember correctly, you know, uh, congestion control uh, uh, was uh, the solution <coughs> to that control I proposed because. Indeed, the FTP application crashed the internet in the 80s, right? So, you know, you, you don't really imagine too much in the future in the, in the 70s that, you know, congestion control, right? But when it happens, you, you can quickly iterate because people are already using it, you know, FTP. No matter how simple it is, FTP and email, right? So people uh, use it and it is something that uh, traditional uh, service, service reaching and Telephone network cannot offer, right? So, so to me, I think the uh, number one uh, roadblock is that uh, the lack of feedback based on more uh, wide uh, wide scale uh, development and application that can guide us to uh, focus on the problem uh, that are challenging, right? So, but you know, but I'm uh, optimistic. Uh, uh, you know, sometimes the pr the opportunity will present itself. You know, we have a lot of things that going on uh, around the around the world about the you know underlying technologies right for example the, the edge technology are quickly evolving and also in the data center right we are quickly evolving from service oriented architecture to microservice to serverless um, architecture for the software and the, you can see the, the flexibility of the application and, and the uh, access network you know what in the middle must must to um, must be flexible enough as well, and I think in the in the and I see in general for that. We, we, yeah, we just need to keep working on it. But you know, but the road the roadblock itself is the lack of a more widespread uh, feedback from the real user. Yeah. So is it the lack of feedback from the real user or lack of the real user? Both. <laughs> I think it's both. Yeah. So that's what what I uh, want, want to say, right? So we need more. Uh, application ourselves so that we can collect more. When I think the other one is uh, to start this uh, uh, PhD or graduate tech school uh, study, the, the uh, advisor will talk that the most important problem is to, to fund the problem. I think that for Indian, so, so in general, some people understand that there are problems with IT, so we need an Indian. But I can uh, say that aside. So I think there, are, actually, for now, there are some things how 
various theories with IT. So, so you say that oh, it's a magnet to data control. It crashes and it doesn't work. But for now, we did it find some um, such problem how crashes uh, interact. So we did that. I think this is uh, <coughs> maybe we don't find this uh, real killer application or uh, problem for for IT and Okay. Yeah. Uh, so because since ever since the day one that the people trying to look at the problems IT and uh, I I think that back to like uh, at least the. Uh, a few years ago, the ICM and NBM already did good enough for the design part, for the concept part. I think right now we need to find a reason to convince people try to deploy ICM. I think that's the biggest roadblock so far. So that, now the next part, next question is. Uh, how do we convince people and what kind of people we need to convince, try to persuade them to deploy uh, at the end? I think it's a carrier. For example, like uh, at and uh, in China, they can have China Mobile, China Telecom. And uh, the next question would be this, uh, we need a reason for to convince them that they, they are companies, they want to make a profit, they want to generate more revenue. So recently I have been thinking uh, NDN gives us an opportunity uh, to look into the data. Then do we need to differentiate what kind of data are there in the network? Because in the network we also have the good data and the bad data. It's actually like a virus. And then for the carriers right now they are Fixed the headache is they become a channel. They deliver, they try the best effort to deliver all the all the goods over the night, but they don't make any more money. So how to use NDN to become a solution for the carriers to make more profit? If we can do this, maybe we can overcome this lower. That's what I was have been thinking recent years. Yeah, big question. I was wondering if you would uh, uh, encourage you, like uh, discussions among the panelists. Sure. Uh, because I have some of the different uh, uh, thinking mm -hmm. from what they said. Oh. The, uh, we had an Indian retreat back in March. Okay. Uh, David Adafanist uh, gave a presentation. I remember it's the first slide showed in big font, uh, something like uh, it is simply plan part to develop applications over in the end. I think that actually is uh, currently a big roadblock to NDA law. We say that, that the applications drive revolutions. If it is so hard to develop applications over in the end, where is that application that actually going to drive the NDN deployment. Uh, I know names, I'm not going to mention here. There are people who would like to develop applications over NDN. But because the manpower required uh, in doing so it is so much higher compared to you develop something over the, over the existing IT packages. There are so many libraries available, so many packages available. Although architecturally it's kind of incorrect, it depend on the centralized server. But uh, everyone sometimes need to be pragmatic, uh, given the limited time, limited manpower, how you get your job done. So I think that enable, enabling application development over in the end is, is really kind of an a, a urgent task that we need to address. That's what I think was needed. A second is that to see how the carrier changed their position from just running <coughs> telephone networks to provide uh, package switching services. 
It's not because someone goes there and sold them the thing. It's because of the market. Uh, they have to be able to make a business, make a living by doing something new. And that requires the traffic. Without traffic, nobody gonna gonna put in the investment. Um, I learned a huge lesson about IPv6 uh, deployment years back. That is, everyone knew we're gonna run out of IPv4 addresses, but nobody, literally nobody, took any action until we literally ran out of IPv4 addresses. And that's just a fact. It's not so much to tell people, okay, you can save money or you're gonna run into a problem if you don't do so today. They still will not do so until they run into a problem. So, so enable applications. And that's the only thing we need to do. The rest will take care of themselves. Like when the carrier gonna change. They will do so when uh, there's money to be made. Yeah. So just, uh, I, I totally agree with, with Alicia. Um, you know, enabling uh, applications. I just want to comment on where the application might be, according to my opinion. I think uh, Lisha's uh, last slide sort of talk summarized what I want to uh, mention, what I want to say. Yes, at the edge, because uh, you know, with the lesson of IPv6, we know that you know uh, the benefit of you know, IPv6 is you know for the entire internet. But I I don't think necessarily ICN's benefit. How to for the entire internet locally there will be uh, there will be benefit right especially with the uh, you know the uh, cellular technique for 4G 5G IoT etc there uh, and AR VR etc there will be a lot of opportunity potentially for ICN to play an important role with the uh, application uh, enabling technique of ICN more mature and more uh, user friendly and with those uh, emerging uh, opportunities we may find some applications that doesn't exist before but instead of convincing an existing player of uh, you know uh, sp carriers maybe we can find opportunity there and then uh, these new opportunities may you know help us help help us in uh, in communities to build an application that has the functionality that offered by none of the previous uh, IP-based applications, and then gradually we can, you know, collect, uh, connect more and more those uh, small uh, uh, enter enterprise uh, or edge-based application together, and then I guess that's all. This is how the internet gradually uh, become popular. Uh, okay, maybe two. Conclude to the retrospective part. Uh, actually, I want to ask one follow-up uh, question. So I think uh, for the challenges with which I discussed, uh, we mostly mentioned the uh, social aspect, educational aspect, uh, economic aspect, but I don't think we, we mentioned the technical aspect. So, the, so uh, is there a common opinion that we don't have a technical challenges uh, for development of uh, ICM for deployment ICM? First of all, I wouldn't think that change people's way of thinking in a short aspect. I don't think so. It's not social. This is something different. I don't know what to call it, but not, not really not social. Uh, you see this, well, I saw it the second time now. The first time is the, the circuit to, to pack it. Now it's not centric to the country. It's just a fundamental change. It's difficult. Uh, but uh, the challenges. Like, uh, for example, how you characterize uh, the issue of a lack of uh, application support. Is that technical challenges or not? I, I don't think it's a kind of unsolvable technical problem. But uh, yeah, in retrospect, to you, maybe I should have also added that there is a lack of recognition on the serious of this problem. That, uh, Look at the, the NDN development. I think that with very, very limited manpower, we must say that. Uh, but still, I think the focus wasn't on whether we should put the limited manpower in uh, 
supporting so application development versus solving some you know internal technical issues that have the network uh, internals. I, I, I think now in retrospect, that's something we should have done better. So I think the current one thing uh, currently we can do is to I think to standard a uh, minimal engine because for the thing there are two problems in current uh, standardization. One is that the people want to build a uh, standard to cover whole ICN. So you see the ICNRG they published some RFC they talk about how the picture of the whole ICN. I think the whole ICN have, <coughs> have two kinds of thinking. One is the not centric. You can use the not centric thinking to do ICN. You build this mapping service, you can map the data name to, to IP address. And from the perspective of an application developer, this is also ICN because you send a request, you get the data. But it's different than the, 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 the NDN thinking. And the, so uh, in the ICN RGs, the RFCs, uh, they, they want to build a, like a, this a universal architecture to cover every design of a ICN. I think uh, we don't think we can achieve that to, to have a universal standard to cover the whole ICN. I think we can just uh, First, uh, for the uh, uh, more step, we give uh, what I think is the minimal engine. Because uh, from the 10 years ago, we have uh, like a, I think it's a minimal engine. And after that, uh, the more and more features have added to design. And I think there are lots of uh, implementation of a minimal engine. So in every platform, in you know, different languages, and everyone have, so, I think any student can develop a uh, version of an idea. You can just write some demo. But uh, people don't know what's a uh, minimal idea to implement. And uh, as Dylan Lisa said, uh, limited uh, resource and manpower. So how about we just uh, send out a uh, minimal idea and uh, to publish that uh, standard? Uh, at least for, for the renters, they can say, oh, our product is uh, have this standard. Uh, if you have everyone, at least will, our product will be compatible with uh, future application. And then uh, they build a, a small product. So the developer can just uh, use this. They don't need to worry about which implementation we should uh, pick. And maybe this uh, Python version will not be supported in future. And uh, so they have, I think the developer will have this concern about which one uh, he had to choose. I got the this idea. I, 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 I agree with that. So uh, I'm thinking, because I'm working on the, on the dance comments, uh, uh, I'm also working on the age and the uh, IoT stuff. Right now, if we can have a minimum set of the NDN, like a, I know NDN has an IoT on the lot, and this we used it, but it still it has some uh, uh, pre-request. It's not easy to deploy like a movie in a quick shot. For example, we try to produce some uh, uh, LoRa-based system. We still have some limitation on the device, and uh, it's not uh, very quick for, uh, I believe we, for us it's easier to figure out, and for the whole the manufacturing like in Shenzhen, they are using some like uh, very low, low skilled uh, people, and uh, for them to use into their like smart devices. If we can produce something like this, that could, uh, Stimulated uh, and then become a very popular application in this area. So, for example, like Android, like how Android becomes a very popular uh, operating system for every smartphone. 
So we are not looking at the smartphones, we are looking at the maybe smart devices, like watches. You can, can make such a light weighted and easy going OS and build in with the Indian technology and the concept and the benefits. That could be, could be a very uh, good thing to see at least. If we just to reconcile what you said and what Kai said, I think the EU was talking about this standardization mm -hmm. and the EU talking about the minimal implementation, which really kind of complement each other. Yeah, I think that can be compromised. Yeah. So, and for the, for the technical problem, is uh, uh, I believe how a lot of people still think NDN has the scalability issue because the naming is a benefit, naming is a good part of. Uh, and then, but comparing with IP and all those people think how to do the uh, faster switch forwarding, and uh, I think that still could be a problem, a problem to convince other people. But I, I, I know Alicia once uh, told me that uh, when NDN becomes popular, a whole lot of people will fix this problem. But which comes first is like the chicken and egg problem. So if you convince the other people, ah, we can do this fast enough, at least for a data center, that people will see, I can deploy it. So that's what I think. Uh, so I think that uh, from network people's viewpoint, it's always a performance, performance, and performance. I think from the application people's viewpoint, um, there's not all the application that is run by the gigabit uh, speed. So, so I think uh, the functionality actually it's important how you make application people's job easier. Before I came for this trip, my students uh, did a paper presentation. I think uh, they uh, one of them presented a paper on Spark. Spark? Yeah, and uh, talking about how many layers of abstraction mm -hmm. wants to take care so that you can hide the TCP IP point-to-point delivery and on top of many layers of abstraction, you end up with, you only need to deal with the, the logic of data. Um, so so uh, if, if the, you can give application developers um, some kind of API that frees them from worry about how many servers I need, uh, or where you to put them, I, I, I think that's probably will, will enable applications uh, in a better way than saying that, okay, we'll give you, I don't know, one terabyte of speed. Uh, I believe speed is, is a function of usage. When the usage comes, speed will go meet the, the demands. I think we kind of uh, really transition to the perspective here, as I mentioned before, and uh, with that, I would like to ask panelists a, a kind of question that partially already been answered, partially not. So, what do, in your opinion, what areas should the ICN research uh, development industry uh, focus uh, within the next five years <coughs> and ten years? Well, for short term, as I mentioned, that uh, because it's IoT network is coming and it uh, has its small size. It's a good trend to write on ICN. And in the long term, of course, I want to replace the internet. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. No it's, it's, well, as it was mentioned, that uh, the carriers are kind of persistent and stick with uh, the current technology. But of course, uh, I don't think we can switch over, switch from IP to ICN overnight. Because it's a huge network. We should take a strategy to start with small, and if we can show something good there, uh, it can spread, and those islands may be reached. And uh, in the meantime, one of the technical network is, I guess, routing. <laughs> if the size gets really big, it will be it will be difficult to overcome. But you know, if, if we can start with small, that won't be a problem. And in the meantime, we can work on that. I would like to add that uh, 
how you do an answer, I think that the immediate and the, the next to the, I mean, the short term goal is really enable applications. Uh, Jeff Burke, our application uh, lead, has been asking for three X storage, security, synchronization. And where's our three S? We have ideas. We don't really have the running code that the applications are. You know, it's not readily available for application developers to use. I, I feel that this is a urgent uh, task that we must uh, uh, get done ASAP. And let me, before I keep uh, allow others to answer this question. Uh, so one part of this question, uh, when I wrote it, was about the specific environment. So I think the Professor Hidner already mentioned the IoT is uh, one of the kind of places where ICN is really great fit uh, for the technology and the IT naturally, or there's like a big lack of IT as of yet, and it's very hard or impossible to implement. Uh, are there other areas besides the IT that we're talking about? Uh, I think uh, I call it the local area. Uh, so uh, I learned some some for the battlefield network is very small and uh, maybe only ten uh, nodes and uh, in that network they, they don't need a the layer three network they only need the layer and uh, layer two point five uh, protocol to to work so they all the many they stuff the Develop some ad hoc protocol. So, what's the application and just uh, to develop a protocol to, to support that application? I think uh, NDN will have, very, it will be very useful to, to have the development of protocol uh, on that uh, 2.5. And the number one, there are no problem and they can once you develop a, a prototype it can be uh, deployed very quickly. So my answer to this question is not very specific either. <laughs> so it's more, more, more general. Uh, similar to use comments, uh, local application that does not necessarily require the collaboration between multiple parties, organizations, you know, therefore uh, Whoever, is want, uh, whoever wants to deploy this application just need to make decision based on the value of this application for itself, right? So, you know, local <coughs> application generates some value first, and gradually we build more capability and intelligence into it. Okay? And then for us who is in this asset community, um, you know, my, my opinion is that we need to pay really very close attention to those rapidly evolving techniques Right, so, uh, uh, so that you know, you know, we, we find opportunities that okay together with those new <coughs> technology and I see and we, we build some functionality that that's not totally is totally not possible uh, for IP to do, and then that's our goal and opportunity. What it is, I, I have no idea, but you know we know that a lot of new technology technology are very quickly evolving. I think I can add one application to the IoT, maybe it's kind of a different IoT, that is uh, augmented reality, where uh, the devices need to, to interact with uh, the nearby devices uh, in kind of a money to money way, so that uh, it means uh, like a name driven, uh, data centric, uh, making it much easier to develop this uh, compared to uh, like the current approach where. The many to many applications depend on kind of a lookup service uh, to know whom uh, one need to talk to, and that of course has all kind of uh, uh, consequences when we depend on this decentralized lookups. So I work with some of the uh, you know industry factories, manufacturing factories. You know they are building their own IoT. So IoT that's very broad, right? So even within this category, we probably need to find some uh, some area that you know ICM can benefit the most. So we help you know uh, 
smart city, that's IoT, smart phone, that's IoT, smart factory, that's IoT. You know, for example, smart a factory, I know that a lot of um, factories in, in, in China, they are building a lot of IoT functionality into their so-called industry, industry 4.0, and they have they put a lot of um, sensors to collect the data from uh, from the, the manufacturing devices. You know, for example, one of the uh, the company who manufactures, I suppose, the number one manufacturer for those uh, bulldozers, that they have. You know, years ago they already built sensors uh, on, on those bulldozers, and they are uh, actively uh, collecting all those data to a central uh, place. Right? I suppose there must be some. I see an related, an related problem. I don't, I don't know exactly. But this kind of environment, this kind of uh, rapid uh, evolution, uh, I suppose some of them will definitely uh, present opportunity for ICN to offer some unique value than uh, IP. I, I have found times uh, uh, to be more spe specific for uh, you know, IoT is too, too, too big a topic. I believe NDA has another very important uh, uh, concept is security. For, for some part of uh, like uh, uh, scenarios, we may need uh, strong security. Uh, NDA has uh, so another bad, uh, because we, we had uh, recent work is try to use, I, be, I believe like uh, uh, you, uh, Alex and I also had the similar work is NDN's naming has a really good benefits of building a uh, semantic level of trust and uh, authorization. Because right now, uh, for the smart home and for the vehicle networking, we are becoming more decentralized way of organized networking, and we still have to solve like data privacy, uh, user authentication, and access control. I believe all these scenarios, uh, we can try to be also use ICN uh, concept or thinking uh, because IP couldn't do this. Uh, I mean, at least you have to build a lot of IP on the IP to finish these kind of scenarios. So that's, that's another aspect that I, I want to add. Okay, and uh, before uh, we open the floor to, for the question from the audience, uh, I'll ask one final question, which probably already been answered in part, uh, but just to give you perspective, maybe you have additional perspective of, of where ICN will be in five and ten years, like uh, deployment wise, it will be and will be deployed on the internet, it will be deployed in ICN home networks, agriculture, IoT, industry, IoT. First, I believe was uh, I don't know which the exact story. Of. Uh, but I think uh, something related to uh, data storage, we can see ICN deployment. Uh, and uh, some like uh, edge networking, especially like a smart home, I believe we can see some uh, ICN deployment because I'm currently doing that. I hope I can be able to promote this in five years. And you're looking for unification or for data storage I and mean, right now I see at home is effective the stove pipes no because I, I believe there there will be more like a smart device and the sensors in your home in the next five years and the, for this small part of the network I believe that's an ideal ICM solution because you need also need to uh, store store the data you need a fish data like exactly what we, we, we shall talk about uh, Today, but the, before I listen to Nisha's talk today, I'm I'm also thinking in this part, but not for such a big big data storage. I believe at home, every home, they probably need this kind of uh, solution. And maybe to add to, to what you just said, uh -huh. uh, even though I'm not saying it, data uh -huh. uh, control. So yeah. I think today we don't really have a control of data, and uh, with the uh, ICN in the end, you actually giving the control back. But instead of just having like somewhere in the cloud the data being streamed and you have no yeah, idea what is happening, with the NDM, the ICM, you, you secure the data, you're the point of 
Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. For example, like uh, everybody knows last year Facebook uh, made a problem like uh, the authenticated data got leaked and then they have to face the court to explain. For, for my family, I don't want this data to go on any top of the cloud. I, maybe I just want a small disk at my home because everybody has a computer at home. I can do this uh, a private network or local network. In this way, do I need IP? Probably not. We still can use Wi-Fi connection to do this, but uh, I believe that could be an alternative to do this. Well, I think um, definitely home IoT uh, is one area that may become fun. Uh, I see an application soon because home IoT, I don't know whether that is uh, already a consensus. But you know, to my opinion, it's happening. Home IoT is happening. You know, I, I can show you my uh, iPhone's app. You know, I have more than a dozen smart devices connected to one single app, right? And uh, including the lock, like this morning, and someone delivered some, something to my home. I'm, I I don't have to be there. I just uh, remove it and then the passcode, one time passcode, and I'm including the the camera on the front door, and also the air purifier, and, and the water purifier, and the security camera, and also uh, router, etc. And even the even the you know the, the kind of movie projector, you know, everything is connected. And uh, I can see the state of it, you know, even I'm a remote, and they are kind of talking to each other, and the light, everything, you know. So uh, you know, some companies in, in China, such as Xiaomi, they have built uh, those. Uh, smart devices really really cheap. They are cheaper than those non-smart devices, and they found widespread uh, adoption by those young young people. So I want to say that IoT home IoT is happening, right? It's, I, I I bet that it's uh, not going to be very. Uh, it uh, it's going to be soon that you know the limitation of IP will surface, and then we find some. Happen. Exactly what's the limitation uh, that you know, ICN can really uh, overcome and uh, offer a clear advantage is for us to figure out. I agree with Jidan's uh, opinion. I think this uh, IoT thing in, in home, in oil industry environment, will maybe will be uh, deployed. deployed in five or ten years. And just to expand our perspective, what about like, vehicular networking, uh, satellite networking, agriculture, IoT, uh, whatever ad hoc communication that we don't really have today in very large quantities? Uh, ad hoc, we had a, had a book, and it's going to publish. I believe for the ad hoc, is like uh, for this uh, the UAV. Because UAV currently, the UAV goes out and they go, goes back, and they, they do it by individual. I believe in the future, the UAV could be a group. And this kind of network, I believe, IP cannot do it uh, easily. If that happens in like the next five years, the IC could be a scenario. Another thing is, uh, I believe, in military. But this kind of will be protected. We, we don't know we how to verify if they use ICM or not. In our project, we are using, uh, we are trying to connect different IoT networks using ICM. So that will be happening in three years, <laughs> hopefully. Um, they are, uh, we are trying to provide a you know, so called citizen made. We provide uh, the components to make up a uh, IoT service and that can be composable by ordinary people. And underneath, uh, hopefully, we can leverage ICM. It's hard to say what is going to happen in five years, given that it's already been nine years since like a, a new project started. Uh, I think progress is slow, uh, but I hope that there will be an acceleration, given that. The, our learning actually accelerates. In the early days, for myself at least, 
تتكلم بهذا التزاري بروسيس but as you go along you understand better I think your progress goes faster so I cannot see where five years going to lead us to but uh, I think we will make more progress for sure than say the last five years I do also just recall the comment that Dan made earlier uh, about uh, the congestion collapse in the mid 80s really pushed out the congestion control development. I believe that if there's a, well, we all hope that internet goes well and smoothly, but if some big incidents happens, that could serve as a big forcing function, uh, push the community to look more seriously into the new architecture uh, development. Yeah, I think that already happened like last year in Facebook the data leaking problem. Uh, that happens and then come and go. Oh. Uh, but uh, even other things, not necessarily disaster. For example, if the new laws get uh, published about uh, the GDPR. consumer okay. consumer privacy, for example, um, that, that could also uh, make major changes. But now you talk about IoT works smoothly. Just with one hidden fact, everything goes to the cloud. Uh, the, the, there are the, some functions you can control locally. Nevertheless, the basic functions, for example, adding a new device into your, um, your network, like the app home net, required cloud approval first. And if we give another point, uh, so there's a Google tool mesh Wi Fi, so this, um, so this is a temporary access point. At home, mm -hmm. so to configure that, you need to have the internet connectivity. Why? I don't know. They design it this way because they, 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 they can only solve the, the functionality in this way. Like if I use at the home, Google knows everything what happened in my home. Will you be a concern? Will that be a concern for you? Not personally for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, I think uh, I think the speakers for my questions, and uh, we actually have a few minutes uh, of any questions that the audience has. Perhaps I could ask a question. Um, I always look at these things in terms of transitions of technology, um, uh, in in an economic sense, and somehow or other there has to be an economic driver for creating change, and it seems to me that we don't we we haven't articulated that as clearly as that we need to from the conversation that I've seen today and previously. Um, we need to find, find that um, value proposition that's going to make some entity that can invest, invest. And, and you know, we can talk all about the, the goodness from a technical point of view and from a performance point of view, all those sorts of things are nice, but unless we can put those into an economic equation, I don't think we'll get the investors engaged. Do you agree? Yeah, I, I talked a little bit about that. I agree. Yeah. But I, I, I think I'm still thinking that I do have a very good so, uh, solution for you at last time, but I've been thinking this. Good. Yeah, Yeah, I, I agree with you in general, but uh, I, I do have uh, more uh, thoughts on this. So value cannot be kind of the same for all applications. So for us, we need to really work into a specific scenario to find a value for it. We cannot just look for universal value for SEM that is applicable to all the areas. For example, the value for home and the value for the factories, the value for the smart city, they must be totally different. And the value is for different people, for consumer, for business, for the government and city, are totally different. I, but I do, um, totally agree with you. We have to find, find the economic driver for each scenario, and that can that need works. And, and a little bit, just a little bit. Yeah. It goes back to the circuit um, um, IP transition. Um, the only thing that got uh, telcos investing in IP was when they saw that the cost of doing supporting a whole range of applications with vertical silos. Was just too too expensive. That was the thing that convinced them in, that they needed to actually find something that was going to support multiple applications on a single platform. Even though if it was efficient or not efficient, it didn't matter. At least it achieved that goal. And it seems to me that we've got that exact 
dilemma in front of us here as well. That we've got to try and create an environment where if you want to go the next step with supporting applications, a wide range of applications efficiently, then you need to take this type of approach and invest in it to, to get that value. And it seems that there's a value proposition there that we're not articulating as clearly as we can. But in two steps, at the beginning, you need a data, you need some specific yeah. application. And uh, I think later we will convert to uh, people who found that all oh, this idea and design have covered all of most of our application. I, I think I agree with so you. Yes. At the beginning, so how to start from uh, mm -hmm. first, uh, a small step? Right? Yeah. Question: Oh, if we need to have some good application, then we, we don't know exactly now, and uh, hopefully we can find uh, some such good application to show that this has the, the benefit uh, over the current existing technology. Otherwise, yeah. So, so I keep, keep saying that uh, uh, right now we have the trend uh, towards IoT will be spread out everywhere and unless we can get this tied we we got to to have another trend. I, I want to comment on on Ed's comment about the value. I think I agree that the different parties definitely had a different value uh, measurement. I, I was in a workshop um, about also IoT stuff. Someone commented saying that the IoT market has already been decided. Look at that um, the Google has a, the home kit, right? The Apple has their what have home kit. No, Apple has home kit. What the Google? Right. The nice well. home kit. <laughs> so, so therefore, the big guys already decided what kind of a home network you have. You pick one out of three. I thought about that, and I disagree with uh, that answer. I, I said that although the big guys look so powerful. But you know who is the has the most power? As you and me. Because the big guys actually make their living out of our pocket. So if we decide that if as long as there is an option out there and the users want it, that one will be the winner. Independent from whether Google or iPhone like it or not. Like for example, people are concerned with privacy. Is there a product on the market that says that your data stays at your home? There's no such a thing. I, I bet, I don't know, $100 to say that if there's such a market, I believe there are buyers. Uh, but so the question, the challenge to us is how we can supply that product that the end users would like to buy. You talk now a lot about deployment of ICM and also about application development of ICM. Um, so I'm, I was thinking if, for if, if ICM or, or MDM is now ready for, so already ready for, for all kinds of applications that could be developed. Because, for instance, you mentioned the uh, use case with the UAVs, which are flying around in um, in, in swarms, which and you mentioned that uh, this would not work in IP. But nowadays, if I'm not wrong, then uh, MDN is always uh, working over IP, which means that you need an IP network below so that it could work. Do you see some solution to? Operate and then about IoT. In no, actually, it's true. Actually, there are some codes available that you can build the NDN directly without the IP on the link layer. Okay. NFD can run uh, on top of the internet directly. Yes. So you don't have to adjust. You don't have. You don't need IP anymore. It also okay. run over Wi-Fi directly, except that your Android doesn't give you access from your NDN to. Right. Yeah. That's really the platform concern. Then sorry for the comment. But that's good. That's good to ask. Maybe other people they 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 still in the in the in the same mood that they also need to run the IP. So, so the for the small farms, this the LT chips, those kind of things, 
with literally you can you have the freedom to run NDN directly over Bluetooth, for example. Yeah. It's just uh, the certain platforms, the the Mac OS, the, the Android, they disable that access for you. But mm -hmm. it's more uh, the platform question, not the NDN question. Yeah. Uh, then also I should mention that um, there's another professor, Hai Ye, uh, he has done some of prototyping about data-centric Mac design. Data-centric Mac design. Get rid of the Mac layer point-to-point -point communication. Uh, you just directly, somehow, he compress the name into a fixed size. You directly answer data, and then data come. That's the NDN all the way to Mac layer. He has a prototype running over a Raspberry Pi. As we speak, the, my students back home are testing their implementations. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's conclude our panel. Uh, thank panelists uh, for inside.